Okay, it's time to finish up and submit. Now this is what's called a comp exercise. It's a compositional exercise, and it's also just hinting at what could be possible, right? So these are the kind of sketches. This is a color comp. Um, sketches I would give a client before I work on the final project. Kind of show them what shapes, what compositions, what kind of colors. Um, in animation, these are called color tests. You'll see them in all the, the art of books. So it's not necessary for them to be incredibly refined. It's necessary to get across the character of what you're looking for. So like most of you, I can't help myself and I'll keep tweaking it if I'm allowed to, but sometimes you just have to meet deadlines, right? So I'm going to try to focus on that deadline and get this submitted now. So what do we do to get it submitted? Well, we need to first turn off anything that's not a shape that we created. So I turn off that, that top layer, and I turn off that background layer. And as long as you don't have any of the grid showing, that empty grid, that means you've met the requirements of the assignment. You've filled in all the space with your own shape tools. You just you turn layers on and off by clicking on the eyeball next to them. So you want those eyeballs turned off. Then if you need, if you do have empty space like that, and some of you will have, you know, backgrounds not filled in, then you just need to create a large rectangle that fills the whole shape. And you pick a color for it that you think kind of works for your, for your image. Now, some of you asked about gradated backgrounds, and I don't want to show you anything here that doesn't also keep it as a shape layer. And generally, to do a really controlled gradation, you would, you would vectorize it first. But there is a way you can play with gradation while still keeping it a shape layer. And it relates to what we did as an option with our cartoon jumbles. And that's using layer styles. So now that I have this background, what I can do is I can double click it and turn on the layer styles and then do what's called a gradient overlay. But it's a little bit of a pain because I'll need to go in and choose the colors for the gradient. So I might start with this color. And then gradate through back to this color. <laughs> but in the middle, make it a brighter blue that I select. You know, just to give it a little bit more variation. And then I can change not too much else about it. I can change kind of the smoothness of it, what they call um, the angle of it. And have a fair amount of control. But that's a nice way to get kind of a more, a more interesting background. All right, so let's say that that's finished, and that's optional, because I could gradate all of these and get a more smooth, but we're talking about basic shapes here. So now, how do I save it? I go to File. Remember, I've turned off anything that's not my own. So I've turned off the background, and I've turned off the background copy. And I say File, Save As. I want to make sure I have it as my Photoshop file. PSD exercise 2. So I update the, the working file and now I say file save as. It will save as a new format type because there's no transparency in this. We don't want any transparency in it. And we're going to save as a JPEG. And where do we save in this class? Yeah, we always navigate to the desktop. Shortcut for that is Command D when you're on the save as window. So it will keep the same name, but it will be a JPEG, and we should see it on the desktop. Whenever you do a JPEG, this is important, this is new, you'll get this options window. And usually I say just use the defaults and go on. But for JPEG, you want it to be the largest quality. It goes from 0 to 12 without ever being more than 5 megabytes. And this is for going on to PhotoBucket. So 
this image, even though it's 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch, when you flatten it as a JPEG at highest quality, because we use shape tools, it's still barely two megabytes. And that's a good thing. You're gonna see that photos take up a lot more memory because shape tools are very efficient. Okay, so I can see it on my desktop. I can hit F11 and see it. I'm going to be submitting that. But there's something else I'm going to be submitting, which you'll find under your exercise two folder. And that's the original image that I'm trying to copy. So I'm also going to drag that onto the desktop. I don't need to title it because it's not my own work, but it's the reference image. So now I go into photo bucket and remember all of our login information for that. We use Chrome. All of our login information for the class photo bucket is under links in our canvas page. I go to library and I navigate on the side column to digital art one, digital one exercises, exercise two. And this is where we're going to start dropping those in. So I can take both of these drag and drop. And then in order to get them to show up together, I want you to label them in this way. And I want your reference image to show up before your shape tools composition. So you're just going to use our, our regular naming criteria. And I'll go over that, which is always you begin with FA 17, capital FA, no space 17, then your first name, just your first name. And then because we're uploading two images and this is the first image I want to appear, I put a one after my name. Then I can copy that, check it, go to the next image, which looks very cubist. I labeled it the other way. Okay. Yep, so you can, you can change it and you have that ability within Photobucket. So yeah, in order to change the name, if you need to make it, you just click it and you'll be able to edit it. And then, because we always have the album show um, based on title, then they should show in the right order with your reference image and then your shape-based image. Great. And then we'll do a quick critique of those. So I'll come around, help you guys set those up. 